Okay, many of you had called in asking about um, uh, this particular lab, the reactivity of metals, uh, lesson 12 lab activity. The problem is some of you are missing materials, or we were missing a few materials here as well. Uh, just let me turn off the heater here a second. There's less background noise. Uh, what we did here was write out the activity series of the metals. You can see, I hope, on the extreme left side, all the way from lithium, the most active metal that's listed in Table 11.2 in your textbook, down to silver, which is the least active metal uh, listed there. And the idea is that we can tell which metal is more active, more electronegative, which metal attracts electrons more which metal will replace other metal ions by this activity series. So let's just look over how this is supposed to be set up first and we can predict what will happen and we'll see if it happens like that. I have not done this experiment yet but we're all set to go. Uh, and the, these test tubes are numbered 1, 2, all the way through 8. The first two have copper strips in them. The next three have uh, zinc strips in them and the last three have magnesium strips in them. If you can see that. Two are in a, a beaker standing by. In just a second we'll, we'll move the camera. Let's review what happens here, what's supposed to happen and see how we're going to do it. Uh, first of all we have all of the chemicals we're told to mix into the test tubes with the strips listed right here, lead nitrate, silver nitrate, copper sulfate, lead nitrate again, magnesium chloride. Now we didn't have magnesium chloride. It's a common salt. It's found lots of times in pellets for salting your, your walk or driveway. So we're using magnesium sulfate as a substitute. That really shouldn't change anything. We just want to see how the magnesium ions behave. The next one again, or for the first time, zinc chloride, then sodium chloride, then potassium chloride. And we're going to put, uh, let me open this up quickly. Again, we haven't done this yet, so you'll just watch along as it's done. I guess five drops to each one, approximately, of those different ionic solutions. And we will move the camera so you can see us doing that, and we'll observe what happens. There's the test tubes, and there's the other two test tubes on the right over here. Of course, I didn't have enough places to put in our text, test tube rack. And there's the chemicals in order. So let's take the first one and try the lead nitrate, which comes in a little bottle like this. Okay. And we'll take out our first copper test tube, drop in some lead nitrate, a little bit more than five drops. Look at it. Hmm. Look at our activity series. That's lead and copper. Well, copper is lower on the activity series, so copper should not replace lead. And in fact, nothing's happening. We'll leave it there and we'll check a little bit later. Again. Next, we're going to check the effect of silver nitrate. Now, you know. Silver nitrate is lower on the activity series in copper. So copper should replace silver nitrate. Let's try it and see what happens. We should get some sort of reaction here. I'll, I'll look at it and I'll inspect it with you. And yes, indeed, you might be able to see that the bottom of the strip of copper is darkening. Something's plating on it. It appears, if you can see it, I'll pull it out maybe later, but there's a gray, sort of, a gray-white substance plating on the copper. That'll be your silver. It spares out what we thought it would do. The next one is copper sulfate, and I prepared some 2 molar, excuse me, 0 0.2 molar copper sulfate. Let's see if we can predict. Zinc is higher than copper on the activity series. So zinc should replace the copper here, 
right. Let's see what happens if we're right. Put some copper sulfate in there and observe. Indeed, again, we see some graying on there. Can you see that? I can't get the strips out, unfortunately. But it's much darker than the bright zinc above it. So we did get a reaction there. That bears out what we predicted. The next one is lead nitrate. And lead, you see, again is lower than zinc. So we should get again. Okay, back again. We just had some battery failure here. Put in new batteries. It didn't take but 30 seconds. But you can see I had just put the lead nitrate into the uh, test tube, test tube number four with a bright zinc strip and you can see how dark it is on the bottom. That'll be the lead plating out on the zinc. On the zinc, correct. Let's take a look again at our activity series and you'll see that. Zinc is here, lead is here, copper is here. So the zinc replaced the copper, then it replaced the lead. Now we're going to do number five Zinc and magnesium, but zinc is lower than magnesium, so we shouldn't get a reaction. Let's take a look and see what happens as we add magnesium sulfate, because we don't have magnesium chloride, to test tube number five. And Certainly for the time being, we're getting no reaction. That's what we predicted. That's fine. <clears throat> so zinc will not replace magnesium. Magnesium is pretty high on the activity series. Let's see what we put in number six. Number six is magnesium and zinc chloride. Let's look again at the activity series. Number six, we have magnesium metal and zinc chloride, magnesium is more active. So for the zinc salt, we should expect a reaction. Let's see if that happens. I don't know how, I've never plated zinc. I can't remember plating zinc. I'm not sure how this will look, if we'll be able to see it. But we'll know in a second. I used to do a lot of electroplating when I was young. I see bubbles. There are bubbles appearing on the uh, magnesium strip. Oh, we're into magnesium, right. So the magnesium strip is reacting. I don't know if you can see those bubbles. It's hard with this particular camera, I think, to get that fine a focus. But take it from me, for now, this is verbal data, but there are bubbles forming on the bottom of the magnesium strip. Okay, that was number six. <clears throat> the next reaction is to add sodium chloride to a magnesium strip. It will be in number seven. Of course sodium, and the one that follows you'll see, is way up here, is one above magnesium on the table 11-2 series of activities. So sodium should not Excuse me, magnesium should not replace sodium. Let's see whether it does or not. First, let's find the sodium chloride. Zinc chloride. Here's sodium chloride. It's one molar. Pretty strong sodium chloride solution. And we'll add some to it. And we should not see any reaction, whatever. Let me bring it up here for you. I know it's hard to see with this camera. And when I'm looking through it myself alongside, <clears throat> I can't see anything happening. So as we predicted, we probably have no reaction there. Let's set it back on our chemicals. And now we're going to try potassium chloride and magnesium. And you can see again, Potassium is way high above the magnesium, so it should, magnesium should not replace or react with potassium chloride solution. Let's see if that's correct. 
Where is the potassium chloride? Here it is. Should keep tra track of where these caps are. And I can't see a darn thing happening in there. So as we predicted, this time we were right all the way along. Sometimes we're not on these, and we can't understand why. But now it fits our theory. That's always nice.